Well, I'm hoping this is working because the first time it failed me. Hey guys, it's Rachel here from RachTheStamper.com. Hope you all are doing well today. And I'm going to wait and see if I can see a comment on here. Oh, there's two people. Okay, I got somebody. Hey, Christina. I can always count on you to join. Hi, Donna. Okay, I feel better now. Good morning, ladies. I had uh, started a video, and for some reason, this has happened now the past two Wednesdays when I start a video, it just kind of cuts out on me. So I wanted to make sure you guys could hear me to see what was going on before we started. So um, what we're going to be doing today is I kind of didn't have a plan until about 10 minutes ago. We're going to make these cards, and we're going to turn them into fall cards. Good morning, Gail. Um, I only had one person who requested, I had a little thing up there saying what kind of cards or ideas or whatever, because I'm pretty much open to make anything. So she said fall. So I'm going to do my best to do fall because I will tell you that my Stampin' Blends haven't come today yet. My, I don't usually get my UPS deliveries until like 6 o'clock. And um, I ordered a fall set because I'm not... I don't really have a lot of fall sets for some reason, and they're not here yet. So I'm going to improvise, and I'm going to show you guys what I have, and I'm also going to just give you a couple other ideas. But um, I made this card quite some time ago with the um, Botanical Bloom stamp set, which I really, really love and I really, really miss. Um, this was actually an idea that I got from Dawn Griffith quite a while ago. I think this was probably from two years ago. And um, the only thing is when I made the card, it doesn't really stand up. It kind of leans forward. So what I did is I kind of tried to rework it so it would be a better standing card. I mean, it does stand. It just is a little bit lopsided. So I wanted one to have a little bit more upright ability. So I reworked it, and I made this actually into a Christmas version. This was the first one I made. And then I made another one, and... What, the reason I remade it is because I did so much stamping here and then realized I was covering most of it up. So I did most of my stamping at the top, but I did the same stamp set. And on this one, what I did was I used glossy cardstock. It's a good idea, except it was a little bit lopsided. <laughs> so what I did was when I went back and did it again, and I did pull this out to show you, I used my stamp -a jig So that way the houses were all even and it didn't look like they were built on uneven land which is kind of whimsical but strange at the same time however I will say that stamping with the stamp -a jig onto glossy cardstock was quite a challenge so I ended up going back and doing it just with the regular cardstock and um, it worked out pretty well good morning Barbara so what I ended up doing to get this look in case this is something that you would like to repeat is I just took the um, the different houses from the home sweet home set and I stamped one of them in each corner so I had one two three and then a blank corner that way I was able to turn them so then I just would do it line it up and then switch to the other house which was very convenient because the houses were really nicely spaced and you could see they're all in a line hi Jeannie and um, it worked out better, but I really liked the way it looked on the glossy cardstock, especially because I put some Wink of Stella. I don't know if you can see that there, but I put some Wink of Stella in the trail behind Santa Claus, and it made the, the moon that they were flying through a little more sparkly. So I might have to try this again, but figure out maybe a better way to do it. But I didn't want to do this on camera because it took a long time for this to dry, and I figured nobody wants to be like watching paint dry. But this was a really fun card to make and it's one sheet of paper which is pretty easy because that way it will you can make more than one out of one sheet of cardstock and I'll explain that to you why and it's pretty easy because you also if you wanted to if you wanted to make this even simpler is you could use designer series paper so you could bring in the fall um, designer series paper this is I believe the painted autumn you know, I think I'm the only person probably in the United States or possibly the world that didn't buy the sunflower stamp set that goes with this. But I really, really love the designer series paper in the set. It is so, 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 so beautiful. And um, it's got a lot of different designs. So if you were just trying to really whip out a bunch of cards quickly using this, because again, this card right here just uses a half sheet of cardstock. That's it. And then you can use... A half sheet of uh, white I believe it is for this because you're going to use one to layer and then these two pieces so it was really easy if you want you could add a piece on the back also to write your sentiment if you wanted to add something else to it but made it pretty simple hi Debbie how you doing today and then um, this would be easy so if you wanted to you could just use one of these as your layer behind here 
You could even layer one here with the designer series paper and then make a smaller one to put your sentiment on if you wanted to put something small. Or you could put a layer of the designer series paper and then just put a uh, stamp a sentiment and hand trim it out and hang it, you know, adhere it on there as well. So we'll see if we can fit one of those in also before the end as well. But let me get this out of the way and I will show you the stamp sets that I got. By the way, this one right here is my absolute favorite piece from that. It is so, if this doesn't say fall, I don't know what else does. And the other side is beautiful. So this is one of those pieces of paper where you really don't know which side to use. But again, this is the Painted Autumn Designer Series paper. And this is coincidentally one of the papers that's on sale right now. So there is a Designer Series paper, buy three, get one free. And um, they're only on select papers, but I do have all that information up on my um blog and one I believe on the Rates of the Stamper Facebook page um, and if not I believe I sent out that in the newsletter that I just sent yesterday so if you guys would like to get on the newsletter all you have to do is send me an email at Rates the Stamper gmail.com and I can add you to the newsletter I usually send it out every other week unless there's like something earth shattering that happens before then but anyway so this is one of the ones and then the um the Be Mary that's another really great one that's on sale and also this. This is my favorite. I have many packs of this already. This is the Christmas Around the World paper, which is so fun. I've made a lot of projects out of this. The stripes. Oh my gosh, I love the stripes. <laughs> yes, that, that Designer Series paper is the best, Christine. I'll agree with you. I love, 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 love that one. And then this is also another one that's on sale. This is one of my favorite ones for making... I'll say like neutral cards in the sense of if you don't know what sentiment you want to put on them. This I believe is called Painted Daisy. Delightful Daisy. I love this paper. It is so great for making like thinking of you cards or again making a card and just not putting a sentiment on it because you don't want know what you want to do. This is a great, 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 great designer series paper as well. And this is another one that is on the um, buy three get one free. But there's a bunch of different ones. There's some that are in the annual catalog and a couple that are in the holiday catalog. So again, if you need details, you can certainly go to the website, um, reach the stamper dot stampin up dot net and it has everything there as well. But the power just flickered. Let's hope that's not a, a permanent thing. If it is, I will come back <laughs> as soon as I get power back. This might be the most interesting live that I've done yet. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make these cards. And they are quite simple. I'm going to just leave one up here. And what you're going to do is, so you have, if you want, you have a whole sheet of cardstock. So what you're going to do is just slice it down the middle. So it'll be four and a quarter by 11. So this is a piece of crushed curry. This is pumpkin pie. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do the crushed curry piece now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the pumpkin pie if I can whip out one of the designer series paper ones. So I'm going to set that on the side. So what you're going to do is you're just going to cut this in half. So... So you have your um, four and a quarter by 11 piece. So you're going to cut it at five and a half. All right. So this will be your base. And then what you're going to do is you're going to cut one at four and three quarters by one and three quarters. Okay. So this is going to be, you now you have your other five and a half piece. So this will be four and three quarters. We'll trim it down. But we're going to go to one and three quarters. I'm going to cut that, and I'm going to put this just on the side for one second. And we're going to have another piece that is going to be four by two and a half, okay? So we do two and a half. All right, so this, this piece we'll be getting rid of. And then we're going to trim this to four. And put that on the side, and then we're going to trim this to four and three quarters. Okay, so again, so you have your base layer. This should be, let me make sure this is four four and a quarter. I thought that looked a little big. So four and a quarter, four and a quarter by five and a half. This is your base. Then you have your other layer and this is four and three quarters by three. I'm sorry, four and three quarters by one and three quarters. I will put all the measurements of this on the blog when I'm done. And then you have another piece that is four by two and a half. Okay, and this is going to be your cross layer here. Now you can also omit some of this if this is like too much and you don't want to do it. You can certainly cut some of it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece that's four and three quarters by three and a quarter. And we're going to score it at a quarter inch. Good morning, Karen. All right, we're going to score that at a quarter inch. Okay, and then this we're going to fold. So this is going to be our wraparound piece, okay? So that's going to hold our card up. 
but we're not going to wrap it around the back here, which you could if you want. You can put a layer on top. We're going to wrap it behind it. That way we won't see it. And then if you want, your back can be plain. Or again, you can also add something on the back if you like. Just up to you. And then what we have is we have three layering pieces. Okay, so these are going to all go on top of these other pieces. And again, if you wanted to, you could certainly swap out designer series paper. So that way you'd have less decorating to do or you could make them even quicker if you liked. So this is four by five and a quarter. And this piece is going to layer over this one here. Oops, and I see I did not trim that one correctly. So this was four by two and a half. So we're going to make this down to three and three quarters. And we'll go to two and a quarter. And you can always take these to the eighth if you wanted. If you, you wanted it a little bit bigger, that's fine as well. There you go. So this is going to be uh, three and three quarters by, I believe that was two and a quarter. Yeah, three and three quarters by two and a quarter. And that's why I always keep my trimmer handy because I'm usually goofing something up. And then this is the piece that's going to be our folded over piece. Now this one I trimmed a little bit short. So I think we might make this longer because I had the problem where, yeah, I think I'm going to, where what I did was on this one I did make it longer. But on this other one that I did, I wasn't sure where to cut it and I ended up cutting it too, too high. So we're going to, we're going to rework this one, but we'll wait, wait a minute for that. Okay, so now we have to decide what it is that we want to do with this. Let me move these buggers out of the way. We're not going to need this quite yet. But you do want to bear in mind that this is going to be your cross piece. This will be your length piece. So this is going to go over the top. So you want to make sure that you do keep them directional, if that makes sense. So I thought I'm kind of torn between uh, lovely as a tree, sheltering tree. I also got out awesomely artistic because it has some nice background stuff. And then the Paisley and Posley's has this really great Thanksgiving fall. So does this one. Thankful for you. So I'm trying to figure out which one that I'm going to use. And um, just because I got ahead of myself before, before I get too far ahead of myself. Today um, is my mom's birthday. However, my mom is no longer with me. She had, uh, she had plans to leave sooner than expected, sadly. So I know this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but I'm going to go on a little, um, little tangent here about colon cancer. So I know a lot of people don't like to get screened for colon cancer because they don't want to see the doctor or whatever it may be. But my mom found out that she had colon cancer, and by the time she found out it was stage four. And it was operable, but it had spread to her other organs. Therefore, she um, didn't really have a chance by the time she found out. So please, 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 for my mom's memory and for your children's sake or your grandchildren or your significant other, please go get your colon cancer screening. Get your colonoscopy. I've had three. They're really not that bad. I mean, you'll be the thinnest you will ever feel in your entire life when you're done with it, which is amazing. And you'll want to drink water so much more, you'll be so happy. So my public service announcement, please get your colon cancer screening. Okay, so back to our ske regularly scheduled stamping. We're going to trim this up. So this um, measures here. This is the folded piece that I did. I want to trim this so we have it ahead of time. We are going to make this four inches. So we're going to make it four inches by, we'll say like an inch and a half. So four by an inch and a half. So I have a four piece here. We'll go inch and a half. Just so this, I, I have all this ready to stamp because I don't want you guys to have to wait for me to fiddle with this. All right. Hello, LaDonna from Missouri. Thanks for joining us. All right. So this is going to be better. This is going to be our layering piece here. That way we'll have better coverage than this little shrimp over here. So we'll get rid of that. Okay. So now we have to decide what we're going to do. I'm kind of thinking if we went with, I don't know if lovely as a tree is going to fully fit on here across, not really necessarily, but we still could also stamp the sentiment on top. Well, thanks for all those, for all those, the hearts and the likes. I appreciate all that. We could stamp this across. We could also do, do this across the back. We could do the big oak tree on the front. Anybody have any uh, preferences? I also do love the, the sheltering tree because what you could do with this is you can go over it and you could color it in with your sponges or with your um, sponge daubers. That'd be a great way to add it as well. 
and we have some splotches because you know every card needs some splotches and so we could even add some leaves in there so let's see let's see what we can do all right so what i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna start with the the trees and these are actually clear mount this lovely as a tree stamp set coincidentally is the oldest stamp set the oldest running stamp set the oak on the front and the other trees in the back. That's a great idea, Donna. That really is. This is the oldest stamp set that Stampin' Up! has. I think this has been in the catalog, I'm going to say forever. I don't know that that's technically a technical term, but um, the oldest stamp set that they have. So what we'll do is, how about we'll do that? We're going to try it in crumb cake. We're going to go in crumb cake, and we'll see. Because, again, I only have this in a Christmas version, so we'll have to see what it looks like. So let's hope you're right, Donna. All right, so we're going to do this down a little bit low over here. All right, woo! Well, that is some crazy looking crumb cake. You know what probably happened is this is not a clean stamp, which I am sadly notorious for. So, how about we do this? We'll see. We'll flip it over and start again, and if not, I'll go with that side. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. This is this is like the strangest day ever. I'm gonna stamp off once just so it's a little lighter. All right, that's better. That looks really nice, actually, just even like that. See how that looks. And, all right, now let's see if we add that big old oak tree in the front, how it looks. And this stamp set, I can clearly see, is dirty. So let's film this one. I think the last time I used this was probably when I made that one of the very first lives that I ever did when my my grandfather passed away and I did a Father's Day card for him. So that's probably got ink on it from that. So it just goes to show you sadly how the how infrequently I pull some of these out. All right, so we'll do this one in I was going to say early espresso, but sometimes it's a little too red for me. That is exactly Karen why paper has two sides, especially my paper. That's why I never adhere it down until I make a decision. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go with early espresso. All right, we'll see what this looks like. Now, you know, I honestly, I'm going to tell you, I did not think this would look good because I thought it would be too busy, but it kind of puts the other trees in the background. That was such a good idea. Great idea. Only thing is, I would say, maybe if you're doing this and you really want to get a more fall, I think right now we're going to go with like a, a sepia tone card. You might want to do it in black if you decide you want a color. So maybe you could do your trees in smoky slate. That way they have like that backgroundy look, fog, and then this in black. So what I need to do is I need to go back and watch this video myself so I can make that card. <laughs> So instead of coloring this in, I'm going to make it like a monotone card, and then we'll add a little color on the inside. We'll see how that works. All right, and that is really, that is a good idea. And now while I'm at it, I'm going to get out one of my sponges, and I'm going to do it in soft suede, though. Soft suede. We'll just do a little sponging on the edge here. Okay, so just a little sponging around the edges. I made a really, really cool card the other day, and I, man, I sponged the heck out of that card, but I tell you what, it made it look so awesome. Just so much depth to it, which was really fun. Okay, so that's going to be our front panel. And now I'm wondering, we might have to change. No, that looks really nice. I was going to say, maybe we should change the background, which you could. You could put this on espresso if you wanted to, or a dark uh, garden green would be really nice. Even Always Artichoke would be really pretty as well. Morning, Catherine. All right, so let's see. Let's get that out of the way. And now we have to decide what we're going to do for our inside. So how about on our inside, since we're sticking with the lovely as a tree, we'll do the, do the pine. We'll do that just to give a little color. We're going to do this in a dark green. All right, so let's get rid of this. And... We'll bring our pine one. I did a really, really great card a while, 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 while back with this one. This was actually um, an idea of Tammy White's that you did this in navy. This is a super easy Christmas card to do, but you do it in uh, Night of Navy, and then you stamp the pine trees in Craft White ink. Now, remind you, if you do that, you got to let it sit 
for a Christmas card. Oh my gosh. So, 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 so beautiful. So great card. Great card if they if you're looking for like an easy Christmas card. And probably everybody already has this set. So this would be a really easy one to whip out. All right. I'm going to do this. This is always artichoke. And then I might add another, another green one in as well. Good morning, Monique. And hi, Linda. Nice to see you guys. All right. So we're going to do this and then we're going to stamp off. All right. I'll do the same thing again. Okay, and then I'm going to do one more over here, and then I'm going to change colors. And even though this is a teeny bit, I might say splotchy, where some of them didn't fill in, we're going to fill up in enough green that you most likely shouldn't notice it. And worst case scenario, if you do, you can either flip it, or you can always just add some sponging, because that adds a nice color to it as well. Yeah, that one looks much better. Hi, Debbie! Hi, Debbie. My mom's name is Debbie. So you're my namesake mom in here today. Thanks for joining me, Veronica. All right. So we're just going to add some trees in. And then what we can do is, I think what we'll do is we'll do our sentiment popped up on something a little bit in the background. How about that? All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a little bit of sky here with some soft sky. And then we'll just kind of go over it sponging wise a little bit with um, something else just to kind of bring the bring the card together color wise. So I got just a little bit of soft sky and I'm going to just I kind of tend to use the side of the sponge when I want to fill in the sky kind of almost looks like slightly cloud like to me. And I am going to go down into the trees just to fill in a little bit of that white space back there. Okay, and then I'm going to go on the side. I'm going to just sponge the top. All right, just like that. And then I'm going to get something different, and I'm going to sponge the bottom of it. Thank you for sharing. Cheryl, I appreciate that. Patricia, good morning. All right, so what we'll do is we will stick with the bottom color on this. So I'm going to go back and just do the, the bottom edge in Always Artichoke. And just a teeny, teeny tap of color. So this is going to be on our inside panel. So right here, that's going to be on our inside. And again, if you don't like the yellow, you could always swap out. You could do garden green, always artichoke. You could do pumpkin pie, pretty much, you know, whatever color you really like. This one is going to be our layering piece that goes over this. Okay, so now we just have to figure out what we want to put on here. So this is going to be our cross panel. So you kind of have to remember. Now, let me show you the cards to see if there's a different way. So the first card I made didn't have any panel on the back. So again, you can get rid of this and just leave it plain. You can leave it plain just like that. And this could be over top and that could be the end of it. But I kind of thought it would be a little more fun to have the, the panel in the back. So I put this one on. However, the first time I made it, I stamped the whole thing and you couldn't see any of it. So when, then I went to stamping just the top portion of it. So we're going to just stamp the top. We're going to stick with that. We're going to stamp the top and see what we can do. Maybe we could just do like this gorgeous grunge and we could do this like a foliage kind of thing. That's a good idea. How about that? So we'll do pumpkin pie. And crushed curry. We'll stick with the cardstock color. And a teeny bit of real red. So we're going to make this just look like falling leaves. Hi, Diane. Hi, Eleanor. I know I love this tree stamp, too. <laughs> all right, so we're going to just do this all over because it's going to be more of a background. So this is just the little splatter from Awesomely Artistic. If you have still, you know, something else you could use, Gorgeous Grunge. Or, and I am going to stamp off on this just so it's not super dark. And I am turning it as I do it. So that was crushed curry. I'm going to leave the crushed curry out because I may go back and sponge the edges a little bit. And now I have pumpkin pie. All right, that's enough pumpkin pie. And then I'm going to do a little bit of um, real red. And this is this will be like mimicking the foliage that we haven't seen much of here because it's still 80 degrees out. No joke. I live in Maryland. And this is probably the most insane October. Only thing that would be better is one year I was mowing the lawn and it was like December 3rd, so nuts. But anyway, this will be my fall foliage. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back with the crushed curry. And let me see. Hopefully this sponge is remotely clean. And I'm going to just sponge the edge of it. You could always add in also a little bit of green here if you wanted to. And what I'm going to do is one more thing. Just to give it like that older look which I had earlier. I'm going to take a little bit of crumb cake. And I'm going to just go over just to kind of give it that old look that went with the front of the card. And I'm also going to just do that same on the uh, the tree panel just to kind of give it that old, older look card. I'm going to do a little bit around the edges as well just to try to bring them all back together a little bit. So if you are late to joining me, this is a card that I had a few years ago that I made that didn't really stand up as well. So I kind of modified it so it would stand up better. And you could also make this, as I've told everyone previously, you could make this using designer series paper if you didn't want to take the time to stamp all this kind of stuff. It really is up to you. All right, so only other thing we're going to need to do is sentiment. But I'm going to go ahead and put this together in the meantime. So what we're going to do is we're going to... This is the one where we flipped. We're going to put some adhesive on here. And... And I'm going to show you how to connect it so that one piece is hidden. Unless you want to put on a back panel, then it doesn't really make much difference. Oh, I think I just ran out of snail. Yeah, how you like that? It's okay. I always have multiple extras because that happens to me quite frequently. Okay. So, this is going to be your big panel, but you don't want to put it on yet, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to put on our cross panel first. So, this is going to be our cross panel piece. I'm going to just layer that on there. And then we're going to put some, whoops, we're going to put some, I'm going to use fast fuse on this because you don't want this part to fall off. We're going to put a little fast fuse that's on the inside, okay, on the inside tab. So, we're going to... This is a little bit of you're going to have to take your time when you do this, okay, because you want it to work correctly. Lots of color, yes, Kathy. So you want to make sure you want this lined up so it's going to line up with the bottom, okay, but you also want it so it covers enough, if that makes sense. You probably could adhere it this way. I just do things the goofy backwards way. slide it over a little bit before I push it down okay there we go and then just give it a press and that'll press that one in as well okay so there's your panel and this one we can go ahead and stick on here and what I did with this is I actually put this up on dimensionals because I thought it made it just a little bit more interesting so you just want to stick them, I'm going to stick three. Just want to stick them on one side because it's going to stick to this. Now the way we did this card we could move it up we can move it down, whichever. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one in the middle. And then we're going to figure out what kind of uh, a sentiment we're going to do. You could certainly stamp in black on top of this. Would make it noticeable. So if you wanted to put a sentiment on here, you could put it on the top or you would want to stamp it beforehand. But I think what we'll do is we'll put something on the inside. So I think I'm going to go with this because it's a larger stamp so this is the thankful grateful blessed this is in the um, paisleys and posies this is a really cool stamp set if you haven't used or seen with bright colors I made one for actually my mother-in-law who coincidentally her birthday is today as well so happy birthday Diane I made one with um, really bright colors I've seen a lot of these on print Pinterest super pretty and instead of it going like a, it went diagonally across the card I should have taken a picture of it but I forgot but beautiful card but this is a really great sentiment and it has some other really nice ones in here as well so we're gonna use this and what we're going to stamp onto is, what do I want to do? We'll do Whisper White, and I'm going to trim it. I'm going to trim it out. But I think I'm going to do, I don't know if I want to do it in black. Maybe we'll go with Espresso, just to kind of stick with the color of the card. So, Patrice, the first stamp set you purchased. Yeah, I think a lot of people are like that because I think that is why <laughs> this stamp set has been around so long because it's been around so long that nobody wants to get rid of it. It's a beautiful set. 
Oh, Cheryl, you grew up in Maryland too? Wow, that's pretty awesome. And now you live in Michigan. I have some relatives in Michigan as well. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do this to coordinate. We're going to do it with, with early espresso. Another thing you could do is you could do this with um, clear embossing powder. Now that would be fun. Well, I think I have some here, so let's just do that while we're at it. All right, so this is just going to be... Let's see how this goes. I'm not really quite sure what I'm gonna do with this yet. So I'm gonna just run my embossing buddy over top of this. And I have, let me get a piece of scrap paper though because that's probably about the only thing I don't have here handy. Side note, I did um, finally the other day, someone had suggested to me, I was trying to match that um, new champagne foil and someone suggested that they had seen somebody do it with mixing the silver and the gold and they are so 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 right but I gave that card away again without taking a picture of it but you have to try that if you haven't done it so what you do is you you um, use your Versamark and then you mix gold and silver embossing powder so what I did is I opened it up poured some out poured some on the other one mixed them together and then I have them in a different container oh my goodness it looks so good you guys have got to try that definitely a great 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 idea Okay, so let's go back with this, and let me. Get, I have my heat tool here, so it's going to get loud for a minute, and my clear embossing powder. So we're going to stamp this. Let's see how it turns out. I don't know. We're going to. Hopefully, this is wet enough that it'll work. Let's see. Yeah. By the time I get it on there, the ink is probably already dried. I think it has enough on there. We'll give that a try. Okay. We move this over. And uh, I apologize if I'm not miss getting anybody's comments, but I'm doing this on my phone from my phone. My son has hijacked my iPad, so I don't have anything else to look at the comments on. All right. Quiet for a second here. Sorry. Okay, well, I will tell you, in a strange twist of fate, it really only embossed the blessed because the thankful and the grateful must have dried, but it actually looks really cool because those are kind of like, they're there, but this one is really highlighted. <laughs> Talk about crazy. That is a really, that's a happy accident right there. I think Bob Ross used to say that. So, clear embossing powder over that. You do want to make sure that you have a pretty juicy stamp set or ink pad if you're going to do that and do it quickly unlike me do it a lot faster than I did but that looks really cool so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand trim this out and then we will figure out where we want to adhere it because I think this will look a little close a little cooler if it's cropped closer and mind your fingers because this embossing powder looks like it's dry but I have smudged copper on myself before and I will tell you it does not feel good all right so we're going to go a little closer because this isn't really one to me that I feel like I want to like flag the ends. I just want it to be like a nice simple statement. And if you wanted to, you could use your corner rounder punch on this if you'd like. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to sponge it with a teeny bit more of the crushed curry again just to bring the colors back in. So if I can find which side that was. Wow, that was lucky. So if you feel like something's boring, I always sponge it. That adds so much stuff to it. And really, if you could see my, if you could see this room, first of all, you probably would die because it's so, so very not organized. <laughs> but I usually always have like sponges kind of laying out. So it works out. Okay. So there we go with that. You could put this on the front if you wanted to, if you had a major tree a little bit better, but I think I'm going to just put it right here in the center, and I'm not going to pop it up on dimensionals because that um, other layer up front already has dimensionals, so we will just put this down here at the bottom. That way it doesn't really take away from the picture so much. So there you go. That was a very long journey. The power almost went out. How do you like that? You don't have to use pigment ink. To, ooh, what do we, no, um, no, if your ink pad is wet enough, you can emboss with your wet ink pad. Especially a lot of people I've noticed say that these um, 
foam ink pads are incredibly juicy. So if your um, foam ink pad is juicy, you can emboss with that. Absolutely. You don't have to use pigment. You just have, it has to be wet. And Versamark tends to stay wettest the longest, which is why people usually do that. But if you wanted to emboss with, say, Soft Sky, and you don't have Soft Sky embossing powder, you just use um, the ink, and then you use white. Or clear, I should say. Clear. And then it'll make it whatever color that you want it to. Hi, Anka. Nice to join you. Happy birthday. I saw you got Rhonda's card. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so this is the um, this is the final card. And then I'm going to show you, why, while we're on here, why not? I'm going to show you if you wanted to do one with DSP, what it would look like. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do that one instead with um, pumpkin pie. Let's see if we can pop this out real quick. So we're going to take a quarter sheet. So four and a quarter by 11. You're going to cut your piece at five and a half. Okay, so this will be your base again. And then we're going to trim at, we got four and three quarters. So we need three and a quarter. I'm sorry, one and three quarters. And then the other one is four by two and a half. That's almost exact. All right, and then we're going to trim this to four. All right, and then we will just have to trim up our um, our designer series paper. So this will be four and three quarters. Okay, so here's our three layers. And then we're just going to have to figure out, probably this will be the hardest part, to figure out what paper it is that we want to use. Oh, thanks for, thanks for saying that, Denise. I appreciate it. I, I case most of my cards, if we're being honest. <laughs> so this is a great, great, great paper. I love this one. So I think I'm going to use that at some point. And I know everybody loves those sunflowers, but the problem is sometimes you don't have enough paper because everybody loves those sunflowers. What else? The nuts. That'll be really fun for the cross piece. We could do that. And let's see. This is a pretty one as well. Okay, so what we'll do for this one, this one we will make, I'll say simple, but that's a relative term. So we're going to use... We're going to use this piece on the front piece because this is my favorite and then we'll put we'll do like a little sentiment. Okay, so this one we're going to do here. This was 4 by 2 and a half. So let me cut my four piece. And actually got to make it a little smaller. So it would be 3 and 3 quarters by 2 and a quarter. 2 and a quarter. Okay, I can help you when I'm finished. All right. I'll get it when I'm done. <laughs> Sorry, little children interrupting. Gotta love it. Four, so we're going two and a quarter by four. Right, and that should fit on there perfectly. Okay. And then we will do, I'm going to do the nuts as the cross panel. Okay. So what did we decide that was? Four inches, I believe I said four earlier. I had to remeasure that. Four by one and a half. I think that was one and a half. So we'll do one and a I'm going to go with one and a half just in case I have to trim it. One and a half by four. Oops. Wrong way. One and a half by four. All right. Let me see if that's... Wow, well, that's a miracle. I can't even believe I remember that. Okay, so this will be this piece, and then I'm going to use this really pretty um, green-leafed piece for the inside. So that is five and a half. Um, yeah, so five and a half by four and a quarter. So we're going to make this five and a quarter by four. And then what we'll do is we will just layer right on top. Okay, so these will be our layering pieces. So I'm going to just go ahead and adhere these on. Oops, you know what? I forgot to score this. Let me score this real quick at a quarter inch. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the fast fuse on the back side. That way it'll maybe be easier. All right. I promise, guys, again, I, uh, I, don't have my, I don't have like a separate screen to read the comments on. I promise I'm not ignoring you. I will go through when I'm finished and I answer all the questions that I can find which is usually most all of them. So we're gonna put this panel on. Okay, just like that. 
All right, now you could make another piece that's smaller, so you could do one that is like uh, three and three quarters by five if you wanted to have a whole layer level to layer on there, but we'll do this. I'm gonna put the nuts on here as well. We'll do the um, sentiment afterwards. So this could be a really simple card. All you could do is decorate it with designer series paper, and then put a sentiment on. This is a good way to use multiple pieces of your designer series paper. If you wanted to show off the different sides, you could just use the um, the multiple sides of it, and you could just use one sheet of paper if you wanted to instead of getting out three different ones. Okay, so this again, it the they do stand up. The DSP is the autumn. Um, oh my goodness, what's it called? Autumn painted autumn. Let's call it the wrong thing. I just want to call it something different. So now if you'd like, what you could do is we could stamp that um, same sentiment again. So I still have that over here. So let's stamp that. And you could do it with Versamark. But you know what? While we're at it, since we did something, how about if we do it with copper? That way you guys can see. We'll do this with copper on just a piece of white. If you wanted to, you could do a full... So. This isn't going to fit exactly, but you could layer another piece on the inside, or you could even cut one smaller, and this could be like your frame, so you could put it on there. You could do the same thing on here on the front if you wanted to. Lots of different things. If you actually owned the um, the sunflower set, which I don't, and the punch, you could paint, you could stamp a sunflower, and then you could punch out some leaves, put that in the center. You could also decorate the back of this if you wanted to. So again, just personal preference. So we're going to do this with copper. It'll be the same, the thankful, uh, grateful, blessed, the one we used on the other one. And we're going to do this with, oh, sorry for my arm. We're going to do this with Versamark. Yes, my Versamark paint pad is very stained. It does not affect it. Sometimes it actually makes it a little bit more helpful because you can see what you're stamping. Okay, we'll just put this in the center. Okay, and this does stay wet a little longer, so it's not as dire that you get your powder on there as quickly. Okay, and shake that off. And I think it's a little crooked, so we'll probably have to trim this one out just a slight bit. Let me set this on the side. Okay, and once again, heat gun. Sorry. I know I've said this eight million times before, but if you've never done heat embossing. This is my still absolute favorite thing in the world to do. I love heat embossing. It's so beautiful. This totally sold me when I was becoming a stamper many years ago. This is it. <laughs> I love this. So much fun. Okay. So let me just trim this down just like a smidge because it actually is fairly straight contrary to what I thought it was. All right. And... So, you could put this on the front. Obviously, you would trim it up a little bit. You could put it on the inside. I think it looks really pretty just like that. Like, no extra anything needed. Very simple. So, this could be a totally simple card, except you could wow them with a little bit of heat embossing. Really fun, right there in the center. And again, if you wanted to, you could do a little bit bigger of a panel. Like, say, so this is uh, four and a quarter. I'm sorry, four by five and a quarter you could do like a four by three and three quarters put one in the middle you could put the sentiment and then that way you'd have a spot to write your note afterwards and again if I had my little uh if I had my little punch that goes with the daisy you could punch yourself out a nice daisy other thing you could do is you could stamp your little oak leaf here you could stamp this in archival black colored and with watercolor you could even stamp like two of them next to each other, trim it out, and lay that on the front there. But I don't have quite enough time to add that finished part to it. But I will finish this with something else. Great. Easy Thanksgiving card. But these, again, they do stand. I definitely had to modify them because my first ones 
it stood, it just kind of stood like so far leaning that it really wasn't very pretty to see on, you could only see like not very much of it when it stood up. So here's a bunch of different versions. There's Christmas. Here's a nice thankful fall one. I definitely will uh, get some more fall cards out there as soon as I get the rest of my fall stamps. This is another one using the um, Hearts Come Home with the inside with the the houses, if you guys missed this in the beginning, I actually used the Stampamajig to get the houses straight. Because when I did my first version, they're a little, kind of like Dr. Seuss houses. They're a little crooked, going all different directions. Which, hey, you know, that maybe it's, that's kind of card it is. <laughs> but as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and joining in. And thank you. I cannot remember who suggested fall, but thank you for suggesting the fall. Um, I will be back again live next Wednesday with another card. I'll have a whole bunch of new stuff in by then. And I'll also have my stamp and blend. So hopefully I can make something with the stamp and blends by then. And I can share those with you guys. I really can't wait to get my hands on those. I just um, had to wait for the shipping to get here. They'll be here this afternoon. So next week we can plan on doing something with the, with the Stampin' Blends. And maybe I'll have like an autumn card. Because I believe I ordered um, some leaf, leaf stamps. And then I got the uh, framelits to go with it. So, thanks as always for joining me. If you guys have any questions, you can leave them on here. Or you can feel free to send me an email at rachthestamper at gmail.com. I do answer those probably the quickest. If you'd like to get any of these supplies and more in my online store, you can go 24-7 in your jammies like I am now, drinking your coffee. Or in your ball gown, as I said before. 24-7 at rachthestamper.stampinup.net. I thank you guys all so, so much for joining me. I really appreciate the chatter. It's nice to have somebody to talk to while you make cards as opposed to sitting in my stamp room making them silently by myself. <laughs> and as always, I'd be so happy if you share this. It brings me up faster in your Facebook feed. And you can find me on Facebook at Rach the Stamper, um, as well as Instagram and YouTube. Reach the Stamper. And the blog is reachthestamper.com. And I will get all the measurements put up there. And once I get this card put up a little better, I'll add a picture of it when I finish it off. So thanks always, guys, for joining me. I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great week.